On Veterans Day weekend, we salute you with beers made for and by veterans and some amazing stories of beer in military history. The Great American Beer Festival just happened and 303 medals were given out to the best beers in America and Pennsylvania got four? What's happening? That doesn't seem right. He's Lou Bryson, I'm Glenn Mack now. We're at the Evergreen Brewing Company in Camp Hill for an all new episode of What's Brewing. What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers Passport. Download your free digital pass and sip your way through Montgomery County. By the Conshohocken Brewing Company, featuring four locations and available at beer retailers throughout the tri-state area. And by support from the Pennsylvania Malt and Brewed Beverage Industry Promotion Board and grant funding from the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. Hey, welcome to What's Brewing. I'm Glenn Mack, now joined by my pal Lou Bryson. Lou is the host of the Seen Through a Glass podcast, Make sure you catch up with that. Today, people keep saying, when are you gonna visit central Pennsylvania? Here we are. We're in Camp Hill at the beautiful <laughs> Evergreen Brewing Company where I am enjoying their flagship beer, the Juice Juicy 6% Hazy IPA. And you, my friend? I went with a, uh, an old favorite of mine, the, a Dark Mild. This is their interpretation, the Quarry, at only 4.2%. Oh, there you go. Pace yourself, pace mm -hmm. yourself, okay. Oh, this is good stuff. That is good stuff. All right. So as we said, it being Veterans Day weekend, uh, we wanted to salute veterans. And uh, one way is to do it with beers. There are a lot of breweries in Pennsylvania owned by veterans or that have beers, which are earmarked to help veterans various causes. Our beer swap today, I brought you the Root Down Hoppy Digital. We actually did a show out at Root Down. It's a, it's a great place. Let me pour you some of this. So this is a 5%, 5.5%, I'm sorry about the, uh, oh no, that's okay. 5.5% <laughs> unfiltered pale ale. Uh, one of the things I like about this brewery um, is they've done a lot of collaborations with other veteran owned breweries. In the spring of Memorial Day, they did a adapt and overcome danger zone with 23 Pennsylvania veteran owned breweries to benefit uh, Pennsylvania veterans. So That's great. Let's salute them. What about you? Mm, boy, that's good. Uh, crisp. I brought something a little bigger. Nice and crisp. <laughs> is that right? This, yes, this is the Big Black Voodoo Daddy. Oh, so that's why you were pacing yourself <laughs> That's why I was pacing myself. Uh, Big Black Voodoo Daddy is from Voodoo Brewing. Uh, we actually have a Voodoo Brewing tap room there in State College where I am. Uh, this is a 12% Russian oh, Imperial. Hello. Uh, aged with barrel staves in the tank. Uh, the director Boy, you're of, graduating of, fast, aren't of you? franchise operations for Voodoo is uh, an Army vet, Jake Volker. Very nice. So, here's to that. Mm hmm. Well, that's a hefty beer. Oh, wow. It this sure is, is an end of the evening. I'm not going anyplace beer, is There's what that is. Chocolate right? there. Yeah, you yeah. Can, you're not going anywhere after that. All right, so there are some great stories, as we said, in Lou. You're a terrific military historian because you know these. Tell me about the British minesweeper during World War II that they turned into a floating brewery. Ah, this was, it was either Churchill's idea or he ramrodded the thing. Uh -huh. They had this auxiliary minesweeper called the Menestheus of all things. Okay. And they sent it to Vancouver and converted it to a floating brewery. It wasn't just a floating brewery. It was a brewery and a bar room and a dance hall. Wow. Yeah, and they were going to sail it around the Pacific for the Pacific fleet. Yeah? Yeah, they didn't quite make it. Oh. I but mean, they it, did, you know, after the war was over, it was there so they could celebrate. Yeah, I think it was in Singapore listen, for a while. Is that right? And it's yeah. a really good idea. Obviously, the, the soldiers, everybody is there. They're a little morale boost, a little Get beer. fresh beer. It's the right? best. It's going to help them. By the way, let us say this. Uh, we said we're here at Evergreen Brewing Company in Camp Hill. This is one of more than 30 breweries cideries, distilleries, and wineries here in the Cumberland Valley Beer Trail. A uh, couple hour drive from the Delaware Valley. Just get in your car. You're here by lunchtime sampling all the good stuff. Make it your weekend. Have a good time. All right. Another story I wanted to get mm. to. So in the spring, uh, my wife and I visited France for the first time in our life, and we did Paris. We visited with Joe Sixpack in Rennes. That was pretty fun. 
and we went to Normandy. And I gotta tell you, I knew the history of D-Day a bit, but Lou, it was so moving seeing what those guys did, how they overcame the odds. And you've got a great story about, I guess, a morale boost. Yeah, I mean, when they first hit the beaches, they, they brewed up and had tea, the Brits did. Yeah. But pretty yeah. soon they needed something better. Yeah. And so they started plotting how to get beer over there, and the idea that worked, was str literally strapping beer to the wings of Spitfires and flying it over the channel. How in the world did you do that? <laughs> well, see, the thing is, they were already rigged up for these uh, external fuel tanks. Yeah. They called them drop tanks. So the first thing you did was wash those out and put beer in them. It's going to taste like right. gas. So that's what I heard. Yeah. I mean, the story you sent me, the first time they did it with the tanks, when they got the beer, it was like, oh, we've got beer. Tastes like gas. Oh, tastes I'm still like, drinking tastes it. Tastes like fuel. <laughs> right. I mean, you know. Again, then they, they've rigged up a thing where they actually had wooden casks of beer in bomb release shackles on the spits. There's pictures of them with these two barrels under the wings flying. It's fantastic. So did they end up, did they drop them or did oh, they no, land Oh, no, they them? would land with them. They yeah. landed them. Yeah, and I mean, they, it, you know, I've seen these pictures and I'm like, that's ah, photoshopped or, you know, cut and paste like they used to. It was real and they did it up until the, essentially the Spitfires hit the, the end of their range. You know, they could only hop so far, but Pretty cool. Well, again, having been out there and seeing what these, I mean, they're boys, they're young men, yeah. right? Probably, hopefully nobody got carded because a lot of them were under <laughs> 21 at the time. Let the boys drink. What they did, to those kids saved the world. Yeah. You know what? That they got a beer, good for them. And Absolutely. And all uh, veterans, we salute you this weekend. We appreciate what you did and gives us, gives you and I the opportunity to sit around and drink beers like two idiots. Yeah. There you. you go. Anyway, thank you. Coming up, Lou and I are going to talk about the Great American Beer Fest. It took place this fall. As Lou said earlier, more than 300 winners, this many from Pennsylvania. We know there are great breweries in this state. What's going on here? We'll let you know. We're at the Evergreen Brewing Company in Camp Hill, enjoying some fine beers. Lou Bryce and Glenn Mack now for What's Brewing. Okay, fam. Quick stop in Montgomery County, but we have to be at Grandma's by 5 p.m. Do we have time to stop at the mall? K.O.P. Yes! <laughs> Do we have time to hit the slopes? Skiing at Spring Mountain. Do we have time for Santa? If we have time for wild bites at the zoo! Do we have time for food? Uh, I have a list of 1,800 restaurants. Yum! Do we have time for an overnight? I feel like we're forgetting something. When you spend the holidays in Montgomery County, your other plans can wait. Honey, call them again. Well, welcome back to What's Brewing. I'm Glenn Macdown. This is my pal, Lou Bryson. What are you laughing at? <laughs> I don't know. Glenn, is, is it wabbit season? Is that what? <laughs> this is some of their official merch. And yes, I will be hunting for wabbits okay. afterward. What are you drinking? I have the File Master. Uh, this is an India pale lager made with a, uh, a file producing yeast. Nice. Yeah. Well, I went all out here, Lou. I got... Yes, you sure did. I got the Sorbetto 67. Hold on, let me just have a little bit of that. Oh my gosh, that's dessert right there. It is, boy, that is delicious. It's a sour ale with, pat, with dragon fruit, peach, mango, coconut, and marshmallow. This is outrageously good. I've got to take some of this home. Well, go for Sorry, it. Sorry, I just, wow. Wow. We, also, we also scrounged up some food here. These are the brisket nachos, which I'm looking forward to the next commercial break so I can eat them. Mm. You got a healthy salad. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we should say we're at the Evergreen Brewing Company in Camp Hill. Make sure you sign up for the Cumberland Valley Beer Trail Passport. Your passport will be instantly delivered to your phone via text and email. Ready to use immediately. No app to download. Find your brewery. Click, check in, and follow the prompt. Lots of great places to explore. Okay. We've been having fun all year with our photo challenge contest, different theme every week. The whole thing, we're going to end with a big bash for all of the winners. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, coming up soon at Ship Bottom Brewing uh, out in Swarthmore. So this week, we're going to show you the results from the winner. We asked for pictures of people drinking beer with their pet. We got a ton. Shockingly, Lou, people like to drink beer with their pet. We got... 
Wabbits, actually. <laughs> we, we really, we did get Wabbits. Yeah. We got a guy, and I almost gave him the win. I'm sorry I didn't, who did it with a two and a half year old hermit crab, which he said, I don't actually know if the hermit crab was alive when we shot this one. And dogs and cats and all ferrets and all kinds of things. It was tough to find the winners, but here you go. These are the three winners for the week. Angela Waybright, Laura, uh, this is a picture of her graduating from grad school with a fine beer in her kitten, Cats and Wallace. You're coming to the party, Angela. This is Chris Peterson on Twitter posing with Griff the Rescue Dog at a beer festival. That looked like fun. And the third winner this week, Susan Swennington McCool. This is her husband, Chris. Um, he's got his baseball bat of beer. He's got the puppy in the Phillies stuff. And I know they were ready for a long Phil's run this fall. Alas, it didn't happen. All right, uh, what about you? You got a, you got I, a pup? I sent a picture of my boy Pippin. Oh, look at Pippin. Uh, what kind of dog is that? That's a Welsh Corgi. Uh, very nice. Yeah. Good for you, good for Pippin. All right, our last challenge of the season is this week's, and because it is Veterans Day, we want a picture of somebody drinking beer in military uniform or drinking beer next to a bomber or something, a military-related beer photo. That's what we're looking for. All right, Lou, we said we were gonna talk about the Great American Beer Fest. It took place out in Denver this fall. There were more than 300 medals, went to 263 breweries. I looked through the list. Four from Pennsylvania. Let's show those first, because they should be proud. Two from the Fine Attic Brewing Company, by the way. That's we've, a good showing right it there. It is, and we've had their beer, and it's, it's really good, uh, out of Germantown in Philadelphia. This was their Belgian triple. They won for this Belgian styled Abbey Ale. I mean, that's good competition. Yep. And they won for, there were 87 entries. Congratulations here to Attic Brewing. And they did this collaboration called Tuesday's Smoked Lager, uh, which was the best collaboration competition that they won along with two locals brewing. So Attic Brewing, congrats to you. And I know there was one out your way. Yeah, well, I mean. Nice can. <laughs> that's the only one they had left. They okay. had, these were some samples they had left. This is uh, the uh, Activator Double mm -hmm. Bock from Wall and Paw Pack Brewing in uh, Hawley, Pennsylvania. Won a bronze in the category. Okay. Yeah. Good for them. And the other one from Pennsylvania that we should say, Hill and Hollow out of uh, Pittsburgh won for experimental beer. Would like to know Cindy what that Lance. was. Cindy Lands is great stuff. They were, I mean, that's probably the experimental beers. It was gone by the time I asked for a so sample. So the question is, Four Why? out of 303. Yeah. I mean, we is used to good. win double digits. So what's going on here? Well, some of it is, it's freshness. You know, our beer goes there. It takes a while to get there. It sits there. Um, other breweries, they're right there. Yeah. So this is in Denver. And when I looked at the winners, a lot from Colorado, yep. Nevada, from California. California, Arizona. And the other thing is, that's where a lot of the judges come from. So I'm not saying they recognize the beers, but the beers are generally in the type that they're used to drinking. Yeah, okay. I had a conversation with our pal Joe Sixpack about this, and he said, yeah, it used to be that this was a big deal for Pennsylvania brewers. It got kind of so big that a lot of them said, like, you know, we're not going to bother. It's out of hand. I don't, I don't judge anymore because it's too oh, long. Oh, you used to judge. I used to judge. Uh-huh. And now they want you there for like a week and a half. Yeah, he said it's not worth the hassle for yeah. a lot of the Pennsylvania ones to go over there. And he said many of them are paying more attention to the World Beer Cup. And when I looked at that, I know that was in Philadelphia actually a couple of years ago. When I looked at the winners there, it seems that there, it is more Better East representation. Coast. Yeah, well, yeah. disappointing. Nonetheless. Yeah. There's great beer, there's great food right here. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that. Speaking of Joe Sixpack, when we come back, we're gonna visit Ren. We're gonna visit France and talk to Joe Sixpack about some of the latest doings. He's Lou Bryson, I'm Glenn Macknow. We're at the Evergreen Brewing Company in Camp Hill for What's Brewing. Hey Ben, uh, sorry, Glenn? Hi, Andrew Colligan, purveyor of fine Concha Hocken Brewing Company beer. I find myself in a bit of a quandary, Andrew. I love Concha Hocken Brewing Company beer, but which one is my favorite? Ooh, I do love Type A IPA. Our number one selling beer for a reason. Yes, and Hazy Life Coach IPA. Oh, this one is delicious. Hazy, juicy goodness. Yeah, and wonderful. And who wouldn't love that? Who doesn't love Ring the Bell American Lager? The perfect choice to pair with our Philly sports teams or anytime. You know what? I think it's Ring the Bell for me, but now the question is, 
What's the right quantity? I think I might have something perfect for you. Ring the bell 12 pack. Why, you've nailed it. Now available in convenient 12 ounce 12 packs at any beer store near you. This is wonderful. But how will all of this fit on the back of my horse? Park it is free! Hey! Four bucks! Yes! With so many affordable things to do in Montgomery County, PA, go ahead, free out. Hey, welcome back to What's Brewing. I'm Glenn Mack. Now the suds behind me suggest it's time to head across the Atlantic and check in with Joe Sixpack. No beer in your hand today? Uh, greetings. I have a couple here. I'm always prepared. <laughs> this is a... Uh, it's a, a Blanche beer from uh, from Belgium, actually. Nice. Okay, time for Ask Professor Six Pack, where our viewers uh, get to uh, check in with the experts. So number one comes from Lou in Media. You know what? This is great. What is the difference between a hazy IPA and a New England IPA? Uh, that's a good question, and I don't think there's really very much difference. Uh, uh, you know, all New England IPAs are hazy. Uh, maybe there's some hazy IPAs that aren't necessarily New England IPAs uh, because maybe they weren't brewed in New England or because there's something else. There's sour hazy IPAs. There's a session hazy IPAs. Um, the thing that's really struck strikes me about this is that pretty much today when you order an IPA, you have to assume that it's going to be a hazy beer. They're so popular. Uh, that almost every, it goes without saying that it's going to be a hazy beer, which is a little bit of problematic uh, problem for people who don't like haze. Yeah, I know, Glenn, I know. I Come know. on now. Greatest style ever invented. All right, next question from Mike Monteleone. Uh, you, Joe Sixpack, Professor Sixpack, what have you found to be the biggest difference uh, between U.S. bars and pubs and those you go to over in France or the rest of Europe? That's a great question. Uh, the thing in, in the U.S. is that breweries are really a place to go. They're a meeting place. They're part of the neighborhood. And uh, they actually draw people into the towns where, where they're located. In, in France, that's rare. Most breweries I've come across are production breweries first. You can go there and buy a six pack to go, but very few of them are places where you can sit down and drink and enjoy yourself for an afternoon. And very few of them serve uh, any food even. Some brew pubs, but not very many of them. Uh, there's two other things that I noticed about the difference here. One is, for whatever reason, French breweries don't do merch very much. You can't go there and buy T-shirts and baseball caps. They're just rare for whatever reason, which, you know, was a big part of my fashion wardrobe. And uh, secondly, the other thing that uh, I, I brought this bottle out because this is something you see an awful lot in France, and that is the old bombers. This is a 750, actually. Yeah. But this size bottle is very common still in, in France, and it's basically disappeared in America. All right, Mike yeah. Keller wants to know, what's the most outlandish ingredient that you've knowingly drank in a beer, and did you enjoy it? Would you have it again? <laughs> Hands down, I actually had to order this beer. I knowingly ordered this beer uh, to be delivered to me. Rocky Mountain Oyster. Oh, no. Stout. I know Rocky what Mountain that is. Oysters. I kid you not. It was made by Wincoop Brewing, uh, uh, formerly uh, the, the brewery of John Hickenlooper, who was the, uh, the senator out there, and he's a Philly area local guy. Um, you know, it, it was unusual. You know, would I drink another one? I'm just going to say I wasn't nuts about it. Yeah. Uh, okay. My, mine, uh, which may be more disgusting, is I had Beard Beer uh, by Rogue Brewing. If you remember Rogue Brewing's uh, John Mayer, who, not the guitarist, who uh, cultured the yeast and used it, used it in the beer from his own beard, which I just thought was rather disgusting. So that's it's, my eye. That's crazy. One more. I, I, we got. Know, I, I did not have that one though, so I can't say. Well, you. Comment on well, that. I don't know who of us came up ahead or behind on that one. All right, we got 30 seconds here, real quick. Matthew Jerkovich, India Pale Ales were originally brewed with so many hops because they acted as a preservative on the trip, long sea voyage from basically from England to India. 
So how come every IPA these days says, drink cold, drink fresh? Seems contradictory. Can you answer that in 20 seconds? It is, it is contradictory, Glenn. Uh, it's a good question, too. Hops in beer are a preservative. They have antimicrobial uh, qualities that prevent beer from turning sour. However, why we're drinking hoppy beers these days is for the flavor of, of the hops, and that flavor degrades when it's exposed to oxygen and sunlight and so on, loses its freshness, starts to become tasting dull and stale. Professor Sixpack, that was uh, your, your expertise in the arts and literature and science uh, boggles the mind sometimes. Always great. Enjoy yourself over there. A pleasure to check in. We'll be back with more on What's Brewing. So, what do you want to do today? Today, I want to run. I want to ski. Thank you. I want to see a show. <laughs> I want to play. I want to eat, like a lot. I want to sleep in a hotel. Can we do all that? We can do all that and more. Welcome back to What's Brewing with Lou Bryson, host of Seen Through the Glass podcast, and my partner here. I'm Glenn Mack now. We're at the Evergreen Brewing Company in Camp Hill. By the way, you know what's better than beer? A beer paired with fun hiking trails, cool downtowns, unique shops, tons of dining options, lots of events, Cumberland Valley. That's the place to plan an easy getaway weekend, sample all of their unique craft beers. We are joined now by Hollis Wood, who is the head brewer here at Evergreen. So I'm drinking a brown Thanks ale, me, yeah. and not everybody makes a brown ale. No. I, tell me about this one, because I appreciate that you do it. This is kind of a traditional English brown ale, maybe amplified yeah. a little bit to, nice multi, uh, you know, yeah. maybe a higher alcohol and uh, more flavorful, less sessionable. So it's all, but it's all English base malt. And you said when you first started home brewing. Yeah, brown was the first beer I ever brewed, so. Oh. Well, you know what? You've, you've, it was very, you've, you've it was a very it. approachable yeah. style for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Easy to drink. You know, I wasn't a hop head at that point, so I wasn't into anything overly bitter. Um, but yeah, we keep a traditional English malts, English Love it. hops. Very Lou, what do you got there? I have a Sun Assassin. Oh yeah. And I'm giving that kind of almost like, and you know, it's like the cat spits in a good way. This is like petroleum in a good way. Um, so there's a, <laughs> a lot of Rewaka in it. Which okay. is a New Zealand hop. Yeah, yeah. And one of the characteristics of some of the more aromatic New Zealand hops are diesel. So that is, yeah. Yeah, if you're picking up, you know. So Hollis, you got a lot going on here. Let's yeah. talk about, you got some interesting releases coming yes. up uh, November, December. What do you got? Yeah, so we've got a couple that, um, for instance, we always do our mistletoe, which is a very hop heavy Mistle triple. Toad? Toad. Okay. Yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> It's got actual frogs in it. Yeah, it's a, no, I assume. Well, the, actual label, the label's in got it a too. toad riding a missile. Okay, it's good. Yeah, it's um, your Christmas ale. It's it's basically our Christmas triple IPA. Okay, nice. Very very Ooh. strong, very hoppy. Uh, it's kind of a crowd favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this year we're doing a second beer, which both release on Black Friday, so the day after Thanksgiving. Okay. Perfect time to come in. Um, that'll be a robust porter, basically. Nice. It'll have some. Uh, Maple syrup, vanilla, uh, and a little bit of toasted chestnut as well. So oh. we're excited for that one. Chestnut in a beer? Yeah. Really? I, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah. But I, the Italians do it a lot. Is that It'll right? be the yeah. first time I've played with chestnuts. So I've done just about everything. Hazelnuts, walnuts, you name it. So. Actually, I think Joe was just, Six Pack was just saying uh, on his Facebook feed he was having a French chestnut beer just oh, this week. Okay. Very nice. Yeah, Very nice. Yeah. So also, I know that uh, Evergreen, you guys are expanding. You're going to add a second location? Yeah. So that'll be in, uh, well. <laughs> yes, I know near, how that goes. Near, the future. That'll be <laughs> uh, next week, yeah, maybe next month. As soon as yes. I start giving, ti as 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 work, start giving exactly. timelines, it's right. going to be double that. So I'm not going to say anything. But yeah, it'll be right. off Linglestown Road um, over in Harrisburg area. So that'll be exciting. It'll be big production facility. Uh, with a, a tap room as well and a restaurant. So, so you're just you're out of room here. Yeah. 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 You need so, some place to put Well, and we want to we want to expand like our barrel program, and we don't have room uh, for barrels. So uh, this could be our barrel storage in the future while we brew over there. So uh -huh. there's a lot of things we want to do where we're confined to a small space and it's limiting us. So 
Maybe I mean, it doesn't, do it doesn't even mean here, it doesn't even necessarily mean making a, a lot more beer. Mm -hmm. Maybe just having different avenues, like I said, the barrel aging program. Right. Uh, maybe some more lager tanks to do extended aging. So, so I uh, I'm a hockey fan. Yeah. Probably. And uh, I, uh, I I go to Flyers games or brewery I work with doing we're doing a collaboration with uh, Keith Jones, but. Okay. You guys have a very interesting thing going on. Yeah, and we were really excited about it. Um, so we're brewing um, collaborati collaboratively a beer with the uh, Hershey Bears that's only sold at their games. Mm -hmm. So um, it is a pale lager. Um, it's hopped a little bit extra, so it's got a little more flavor and aroma. And then uh, it's served in uh, nice big 19-ounce cans at the game. I, so. I love the package. The package looks fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> And so we're excited about it. The team's excited. Um, they've done a couple of videos through their social media, which has been fun. So, um, and I was actually at the game last week and had one, so it was perfect. There you go. Did they win? Yes, three nothing. Yeah, even better. <laughs> All is good. <laughs> it was great. Everything is good. Um, okay, and the, and one other thing, I know it's uh, this is a, a little bit affected by the pandemic, but you guys have your own farm. Yeah. Which I, which I think is very cool. Yeah, and we it started off as not only growing fruits and vegetables, but having kind of a mixed culture wild ale program. Um, but that's kind of been put on hold, um, not forever. So mm -hmm. it's, some, it's one of those things, if we expand it's, and we have a larger crew, we can get back to doing things like that. Some slow beers, you know, yeah. that take time. Love it. So Love it. Uh, the menu here, a lot of hazies, which by the way, <laughs> our, our viewers know is my, I love a brown ale. Yeah. I love. By the way, we didn't ask what you have. This here. is a uh, this is electric feel. It's a dry hopped pilsner we just released. It's got some traditional noble hops, but it's also got um, some new American uh, aroma varieties. So okay, but a lot of a, a lot of hazies. Which yes, but as a brewer, crowd we, we love our lagers. So I was going to say, hazy, right? Hazies are crowd pleasers. So right. Yeah. This is what you like. Okay, people want to get to Evergreen here. This location in Camp Hill. Tell people how to find it, your hours. We're open seven days a week. Mm -hmm. uh, we open at 11 a.m. every day. Sundays are great, we do brunch. It's the only day we do brunch. The brunch is fantastic. Um, right on the pike, what we're- Carlisle. Yeah, on the Carlisle yeah. Pike. Yep. What, like a half mile off the 81 exit? So, yeah, easy to find. Um, yeah. Not hard at all. I so. came from the Delaware Valley, it's like easy drive. Yeah, there's drive. actually a couple different exits you can take. And by the on. way, Great swag. <laughs> yeah. I actually need to pick one of those up. Well, so. here you go. <laughs> oh, thanks. My gift to you. Appreciate anyway, Hollis, thank you so much for having us, man. Yeah, really you. enjoyed this place, thank Evergreen. Guys, Lou, yeah. great to see you. Lou and I are going to, we're going to continue our tour of Central Pennsylvania next week uh, right here in the Cumberland Valley. So stay tuned for that. Pleasure to see you. We'll see you next week on What's Brewing. Thanks, guys. What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers Passport. Download your free digital pass and sip your way through Montgomery County. By the Conshohocken Brewing Company, featuring four locations and available at beer retailers throughout the tri-state area. And by support from the Pennsylvania Malt and Brewed Beverage Industry Promotion Board and grant funding from the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board.